Major label music publication might be dead, but what's the next option? As musicians, it's our job to engage the consumer, and the consumer has overwhelmingly chosen to go to digital distribution and streaming sites. Streaming services such as Spotify and Pandora have gotten a lot of flack recently over how much money that they're paying out to the artists. But it's not them who's actually paying the artists, it's those artists' labels. Because you can't actually get onto these sites unless you have a label. A French label trade group that goes by SNEP came out with a study that actually went through two companies, one of which being Spotify, the other one, Deezer, uh, to see where the money was going. And I think you can see from the pie chart, it's not to the artists. So in the purple, we have 20% going to the platform. That would be Deezer or Spotify. Whereas 45% is going to the label. Now the artist, if he's both the performer and the songwriter, will get a whopping 16%, which is the same amount that they're paying in taxes. Is there any way we can cut out this middleman that's costing us almost 50% of our revenues to these streaming sites? Well, the short answer is no. And the longer answer is no, but. If we look at uh, Spotify's website, they show us that it's easy for you as an independent, independent artist to get your music on Spotify, but you do need a label or some kind of aggregator in order for them to take your music and, and, and use the license appropriately. If you don't have a label, don't worry because they have listed here things that you can do in order to get yourself ready to go on Spotify. With these companies like Emu Bands, Record Union, and CD Baby, you can find a way to get your music licensed in a way that these streaming sites can use. So what are, what are these things, what are these sort of pseudo labels? Well, they're a way to help you get onto these streaming sites. So I took a look at Emu Bands. Emu Bands charges you per release. So that means that every time you come out with a new work, you, you pay these, this company money in order for them to release your music to, to these streaming sites. Now it looks like we're looking at like 25 to 50 euro. So of course you have to do your, your transition based on the market that you're in. The United States, it's, it's not quite double the dollar per, to the euro, but you're gonna be paying a little bit more money. But this is a lot less than almost 50% of your revenue generated going straight to a record label. Now you have a lot more control. That being said, without that major label behind you, all of the production and the promotion expenses fall on the shoulders of the artist. Everything I've shown you thus far is talking about premium streaming services. And what that means is it's not you just open up your, your Spotify app on your phone and you start listening and you listen to the ads, whatever comes through, uh, and you're supporting the artist based on the ads that you listen to. This is, this is like a pay, not a pay per play, but a subscription a lot like Netflix, where you pay you know, the $10 a month for Spotify or Pandora and then that money gets divvied up between all of the artists that you listen to during that month. Um, so all the numbers I've shown you thus far are for premium, premium services like that. Uh, if you watched my last video with, where I talked a lot about Steve Albini, he, he says that premium streaming services really miss the point, and I think he's right, because people aren't listening to, to high quality streams, they're not listening to streams in general because of, of the quality of the, of the listening experience. They're listening to streaming services because of the convenience of the listening experience. So another option that I'm seeing a lot of consumers go towards is SoundCloud. And SoundCloud is something that a lot of people are using these days. SoundCloud is like a lot of other streaming services, but you're looking at uh, artists individually. It's a lot more like a social network for these artists' dis distribution platforms. But the problem with SoundCloud is, unless you're frankly already mega famous, you cannot monetize on SoundCloud. All you can do is post your, your music and hope to get noticed and generate a following. There's no way for you currently, unless you have a huge following already, to monetize using SoundCloud. Now, that doesn't mean it's not something to watch. I think that right now they're currently working on ways to get the general music pop population able to earn some revenue off of their site. But right now, 
it's really, like I said, more of a, a social function where people can come check you out. And I think there's some better options out there. So far, the best thing that I've found that's really going to enable artists to be able to write the music the, that they want and put it out in a place where people can actually buy it relatively easily is a site called Bandcamp. So Bandcamp is really great because you can host your music there, you can sell physical copies there, you can sell your merchandise, and it's free to the artist up front. Now what that means is it's better than a record deal because there, you know, there's no loan that you have to pay back. But what you do get is they do take money away from sales that you generate. And I think it's it's pretty generous. It's like 13%. So the artists are taking away a, a huge amount of the revenue as compared to they do with traditional publishing options. Um, I've found a ton of really great bands here. This is what a site looks like on Bandcamp. They have an app that you can you can download to any of your devices and you can you can stream things here on the web so I can hit play and I can listen to this. And if I buy it, and if you notice, it says buy now, name your price. So this artist has basically said, whatever my art is worth to you, pay me that much. So which means that some people might come and just download it for free and not give them a dime. You've got to figure out if you're willing to do that. But a lot of people will come in and they'll pay They'll pay quite a bit of money. I mean, I've seen people come in and pay $20, $30, $40 for something just because they liked it enough that they wanted that person to keep creating. And you see this uh, if you're a video game player and you watch Twitch TV at all, you see people come in and just donate to streams a lot of money because they want to continue to see that content. And I really feel like Bandcamp is the best way to see that right now. So Bandcamp takes a portion of physical copies, so if you're selling CDs or vinyls, you can you can market all of that here. And you see this is a really beautiful splash page where it, it almost takes the place of a band website and you can add things like tour dates right here on your Bandcamp, on your Bandcamp site or you can link it to a, a web domain that you already have for your band. There's a lot of really great options you can get with band, Bandcamp and you are in way more control of your intellectual property than you are otherwise. So the great thing about Bandcamp is that as a consumer, you can support the artist directly that you want to support. While if you're getting a subscription from a streaming site, you're never really sure if that money is actually going to the artist that you want to see more of. You can also, at a Bandcamp site, get all of their merchandise, all of their physical media, and their digital media at a price that a lot of times you as the consumer get to choose. Now, if you're an artist and you're on Bandcamp, what's great is, you have an aggregated site where people can go and figure out anything that they want to find out about you. You have a place that your current fans can link possible new fans to in order to see what you're doing, what your music sounds like, and they can listen to it for free before they have to buy. And this is one of the big things that we, we've been seeing you know, in the last 20, 25 years with piracy is that people don't really want to buy uh, an entire CD if they, don't, if they don't know what is going to be on it. Uh, and it's one of kind of the tragedy of the 90s is we saw all of these all of these bands come out with CDs with 12 tracks that only had one song that anyone wanted to listen to on it. Well, the internet has certainly gotten rid of that. Not only that, but as you're trying to grow your fan base, you're going to see that you can tag yourself in these kind of genres where fans are going to be listening to music that is like you and hopefully your group is going to be recommended and it's part of your package of growing your fan base. So what's the route that you should take? I can't give you an answer for that because I don't know what your group is doing and I, I don't know what you're willing to put in. So if you're pretty big and you're selling out clubs with 500 people, you know, three or four times a week, what I'm talking about is going to be only part of your business strategy. You're probably going to have a publishing label of some kind to at least manage certain things so that you don't have to. Now, but if you're, if you're just getting started, you're a local band, and you're just trying to put yourself out there so that maybe someone outside of your local area will start to notice you, I think a lot of these are great ideas. Now, you're, I don't think you're going to want to put yourself on something like Spotify, which is worldwide 
because it's going to be really hard to get noticed in that big a market. Whereas if you put yourself on something like Bandcamp, Bandcamp you can put yourself in your own little uh, social media market to start pushing your band and promoting your band. Um, in a lot of cases, I think that Bandcamp is just such a great thing for artists and I'm really grateful to a buddy of mine who, who turned me on to it because I can buy my music there, I can get recommendations on, on other things that I'd like to listen to there because I, like a lot of people, have very specific tastes. I love metal, so when I, and as if you listen to metal, you know that metal isn't just this broad sweeping genre that encompasses a lot of things you know I have a very specific taste in metal so it's not like I can just go to the metal section at my local tower records and find something new that I like because tastes or tastes today have gotten so specific and I don't think that's a bad thing in fact I really think it's it's good because artists are able to make the art that they want to make so I really think that Bandcamp is a great way for any platform to get started and to grow their brand. Everything I showed you today is gonna to be in a link in the description down below. Um, please like and subscribe if you like what I got to talk about. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Till next time, I'll see you later.